This week on Sail Away, we're leaving Terra Firma behind. The last plane we're going to be on for a while. It's been a hectic process getting ourselves and the boat ready to leave, but it's finally time to shove off. Hi, cruise ship. We know the boat's not 100%, and that's the whole reason we're going to the U.S. But hopefully it's ready enough. We have a long passage ahead of us. 1,400 miles and 8 to 10 days in a lot of unpredictable conditions. Starting day two. How's the ride been so far? We know the sailing could be rough more often than not. Making good ground uh, with all this north wind, it's just, it's a rough passage. And we do expect the unexpected. How far does it have to go up? All the way? Big wave. This is part one of our three-part passage series, and it starts right now. Ever wish you could escape normal life and experience more of the world? So meet me on that island. Well, we did just that. We sold everything we owned on dry land and sailed away. Promise me that we'll sail away. Now we are roaming the planet in search of new adventures and sharing it with you every week. Just promise me that we'll sail away. So hit subscribe and escape normal with us. I'll be yours forevermore. Come on, it's just that little button down there. That's it. Well, it's finally that day. Is this old sailboat ready to sail 1,400 miles in unknown conditions? Are we? Breakfast time. Last one. Passage breakfast. Hopefully not the last one. Before we leave. Passage breakfast of champions. Yours actually looks healthy. Could be a wet couple days. We'll see. We're pretty much going to have wind on the beam all the way to Great Inagua. All the way to DR and almost to Haiti, it should be a beam reach or a tiny bit behind, a little bit in front. So not, not ideal. Kind of big waves, eight, nine foot waves on the beam, about nine second interval. So we'll get out there and see, see what it's going to look like. we got a few things to do still. Got to fill up this jalopy with water, diesel, diesel for the generator, take Zeke for a nice walk, get rid of some trash. All that stuff. So we're not leaving real early. But we are leaving. Thank you. Last land we're going to see for seven to ten business days. Okay, not see. The last land we're going to be on for a while. A while. All right, Rivers. I see you run up and back. The USVI, and particularly St. Thomas, has definitely become home for us since we started cruising. We've become so familiar with it that every time we sail back here, it feels like we've sailed home. Which means every time we leave it, it's more and more like leaving home. When it's time, it's time. And after all our preparation, it is definitely time. We know we'll be back. We just don't know when. We got these slobs working though. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Schwab the deck! Wave to the cruise ship. Hi, cruise ship. Hi, other boat. When you know you're about to be at sea for eight to ten days, you definitely need a before picture. All right. You ready to get to work? Well, there's a little squall out there. A little rain.
We were just outside the anchorage, but this is a sailing passage. Let's sail. days and 12 hours at the moment. Six days at nine to 10 knots of sustained boat speed would be pretty unlikely. But sailors have to be optimistic. Otherwise, we'd never leave shore. Thanks to two successive large weather fronts in the Atlantic and off the coast of the U.S., the best potential wind angles took us on a course south of the Bahamas and eventually into the Gulf Stream. We didn't know if any stops would be required to wait for weather, so we were prepared to wing it. Not the most settled sea state, but it's not the worst. Going right by Culebra. I've got no complaints so far. The wind's a little lighter than I thought it would be. Right now it's probably only about 10 knots. And we're cruising along at about 7 knots. On beam reach. And we will take that all day long. And we have to take that all day long. Probably got conditions like this for the next 24 hours at least. Well, it could get a little rougher. We might get wind a little more in front of us. This all kind of evens out quite a bit when we're away from land. We're up close to land like this, it's all kind of stacked up and in between the channels, it's very, very, very confused. But then once we get out away from Culebra, I think it'll be like it was back there, it kind of starts to get in a, more of a groove. Those are some decent swells. A lot of to-do gets made about never sailing to a schedule, waiting for weather windows and all that. We've talked about it plenty ourselves and we always try to give ourselves the best ride possible and the safest passage. But it's also 100% true that the weather rarely gives you exactly what you want, even if you sit around and wait for it for weeks. So sometimes it comes down to just knowing what you and your crew are willing and able to handle, trusting your boat, and just going with the best option Mother Nature gives you. night there was a little bit of squalls and it's just been super waving which we knew about we knew that was gonna be a problem so yeah so far that is turning out to be true um we're making good speed though so we're like pretty steady average eight and a half knots um, we're just above the Mona Passage right now so we're right in between DR and Puerto Rico that seems really good. I don't, we don't really have anything to base it on, but I think we're making really good time and we'll get to right in Nagua or the Crooked two days. So I think it was like two and a half days for us to get there when we left and it's been about 12 hours. So there's your update. <laughs> With the four of us, we tried to figure out a way for everybody to get the most sleep. So basically our uh, watch schedule was Eric and I on watch from 11 to 3 and then dad and JP were on at 
three to seven. Right now it's seven o'clock. So here we are. Well, this is passage make right here. We are just rocketing along. Our average is about 7.6, so that's really good. Right now, we're knock on wood, no issues, everything's been working fine. So far though, no big complaints. Just moving along, man. Rock and rolly ride. Is it? Time to reef in the head sail. Alright, guess I'm go. One day in the in the tank. Starting day two. How's the ride been so far? <laughs> the motion in rough seas on a cat is definitely a lot different than on a monohull. It took Lauren about a day to get adjusted, and I don't think any of us were fully a hundred percent right off the bat. But once over that hump, it sure is nice to be able to stand upright while doing eight to ten knots. Well, we are making good ground. Uh, with all this north wind, it's just, it's a rough passage. And we kind of had a feeling it was gonna be, and we knew the swells were gonna be pretty big. We went through a short period where the swells were definitely over 10 feet, but they're not the problem. It's all the confused stuff that makes it a shitty ride. And right now, we are kind of approaching the first of the two big banks that lead up to the Turks and Caicos, uh, where the water drops down to much more shallow depth. Behind those banks, it's supposed to be a little bit calmer. I don't know, we'll see when we get there. And I think maybe all of this sea state is just a big funnel causing everything to kind of look like this. like that. Every once in a while we just get a deck washer that comes across and soaks everything including the cockpit and whoever's in it. But, you know, another beautiful sunset coming over here. Everybody is safe and sound and we're making great progress. The boat is sailing really well. A little wild and wet. We'll see what tonight brings. Walking the dog. Good morning. morning walk. You're a good boy. We were only a couple of days in, and still a good ways out from Great Inagua, our potential stopping spot, when our first big issue reared its ugly head. Our main hydrant is shot all the way up to the top. Yeah, we got a little bit of rain up ahead that we're trying to avoid. But if we sail jib along, we can go pretty slow. I think the best bet is to like do it now. We were very lucky that the halyard hadn't fully parted by the time Chris spotted it, just the outer cover. But the only way to hopefully fix it was to go up the mast. And going up the mast in rolly seas while still underway was definitely something I'd never done before. And now that I have done it, I'd definitely prefer never to do it again.
If you've never done something like this before, it's almost impossible to convey just how strong and abrupt the forces are that are trying to throw you around up there. It doesn't look that bad from down below. But at times, it was literally a fight with every ounce of strength I had just to hang on. How far does he have to go up? All the way? I found myself pondering what the hell we were going to do when I inevitably got shaken loose and broke an arm or a leg. Big wave. Luckily, I maintained my death grip when I had to. Alright, the coming down. Alright. Cut the halyard loose and secured the top part to the shroud since I couldn't reach it from where I was. Yeah, you're doing so good. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Around the shroud. Very good. Coming down. And saying a few prayers under my breath as I went down, finally made it back to the deck of the boat. See any whales? <laughs> no, I was gonna yell fish on. <laughs> it took a lot of tugging to get the cover stretched back over the existing core. And then it was just a matter of whipping the end and turning our two to one purchase halyard into a single line halyard. That would be the end of sailing under full sail because we didn't know if we could get a full hoist and we didn't want to stress the single line halyard. But that wasn't really a big deal. We were reefed almost all the time anyway. Okay, now, so now what are we doing? It's going to be a single line halyard. Okay. So do we, we have to go back up? Yeah. Okay. So right now it's just going to go to the top of the sail. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it used to. Whatever we're doing, we should probably uh, do it. And that right there was the reason we wasted no time getting up the mast in the first place. And now it was just a matter of wondering if that halyard could hang on for the next 1,000 or so miles. What's our wind at? 